Sir, how does it feel to be this episode's token alien? Well, I... He doesn't speak. He's only here for diversity. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Star Trek Strange New Worlds Episode 2 aired Thursday, and the show is continuing its winning streak. I never expected this episode to make me emotional, but something about the themes it explored and the way they were presented really pulled at something in me. We begin with a shot of Una's childhood on a Federation colony in the Volterra Nebula, the same planet we later see Captain Pike go to to ask Nira Catul for help. To understand the themes and emotions of this episode, you need to understand who Illyrians are and why the Federation is so terrified of them. Nira Catul said it best when she said, if Una Chin Riley is to be tried for being an Illyrian, then the court must understand what it means to be an Illyrian. It's important to note that despite the mention of Khan Nunyan Singh in this episode, his faction of Augments, or genetically modified humans, are not Illyrians. The only crossover between the two is that both practice genetic engineering. The Federation's ban on this was the result of the eugenics wars that happened on Earth in the 1990s and were also referred to as World War III. At the time, most of the planet was controlled by different augmented dictators, and the wars were in order to remove these tyrants from power. The result was over 37 million casualties. The most notorious and powerful of these dictators was Khan Nunyan Singh, who controlled over a quarter of the planet from Asia to the Middle East. Though his reign was said to be a peaceful one, until his territory was attacked. In the Space Seed episode of the original series, Kirk refers to him as The best of the tyrants, and the most dangerous. The USS Enterprise came across a ship filled with these genetically modified humans who had fled Earth in the 1990s and been in stasis for over two centuries. It is discovered that the leader of these people is none other than Khan himself. After attempting to take over the ship, he is granted a planet of his own in the SETI Alpha star system. Lieutenant La'an Nunyan Singh is a descendant of his, though she must have come from the 1990s lineage since Strange New Worlds takes place prior to the events of the original series. Illyrians, on the other hand, were a species of humanoids native to the Delphic Expanse whose original settlement was on a planet in the Volterra Nebula. Because of the eugenics wars, Illyrians had never been allowed to join the Federation, which led to a number of tragic events. On the planet Hetemet 9, the Enterprise discovered an abandoned Illyrian colony. Its inhabitants had tried to reverse their genetic engineering in order to be accepted into the Federation, but this made them vulnerable to a disease that ultimately killed them all. Una's home planet in the Volterra Nebula was given provisional membership into the Federation on the condition that they ended all genetic engineering practices. This led to Illyrians having to either renounce their culture or practice it in secret. And no matter what they chose, they were discriminated against and seen as less than. This grew so out of control that the city had to be divided into two halves, a human side and an Illyrian side. Una's family chose to continue hiding their Illyrian heritage and move to the human side in the hopes of a better life within the Federation. It was this choice that allowed Una to eventually join Starfleet and become a decorated officer. But her failure to disclose her modification led to her being arrested and put on trial, which leads us into the events of this episode. Pike travels to Una's home planet in the Volterra Nebula to speak to one of her childhood friends, Nira Catul. She's become a well-known lawyer who's challenged the Federation's laws on many occasions. But in this particular case, she refuses to help. She and Una had had a falling out over Una's decision to hide who she was and join Starfleet. But Pike is able to convince her that if she won't do it for Una, she should do it for all Illyrians, and that this case could be the beginning of real change to the Federation's archaic policies. On that basis, she reluctantly agrees to represent her old friend. This entails her showing the Federation its own hypocrisy by interrogating Admiral April on the stand. She points out three instances in which he broke the Prime Directive, but received no disciplinary action as a result. This was arguably a much more important law than the one Una broke. So why is she being charged and he isn't? The court and even her client can't see her plan at this point, but she isn't doing anything without a reason. Eventually, she brings Una to the stand and asks her about what life was like as a child. The emotion comes in when Una explains the realities of growing up Illyrian within the Federation. The persecution and discrimination they had to endure made things as simple as a broken leg life-threatening. For people like me who live in the United States, we are all too familiar with discrimination, prejudice, and the resulting violence. Our nation was built on the backs of people of color, and yet even today, racism runs rampant through the highest levels of our government. Most recently, attacks on reproductive rights and the trans community have risen to a boiling point, forcing some people to leave their homes and move to friendlier states. But not everyone can afford the luxury of moving. The NAACP, LULAC, and the Human Rights Campaign have all issued travel advisories to the state of Florida. 
the vast majority of Americans live in constant fear that our rights will be taken away. All of that is to say, I think that is why this episode made me so emotional. It explores themes that were close to home for a lot of people, especially those of us living in the United States. But it was also a message of hope. Una stood up to the discrimination. She had the support of her friends and crew, and she ultimately won. It didn't win any rights for Illyrians, but it was a spark of hope, and a precedent that could be built on to pave the way for future legislation. I really hope Nira Katul is a character we see again this season, and that Illyrian rights is a recurring theme, and hopefully we get to see the discriminatory laws completely overturned on screen. Though it's likely not going to happen this season, since we already know the Gorn threat is coming, and that, spoiler alert, the next episode will take us into an alternate timeline enterprise and back into the past. So another break from a linear storyline for the season. We'll have to wait and see what the next episode brings, and I'll be here reviewing it. If you want to come back next week, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I'll be here all season, as well as posting other videos such as my Elder Scrolls Online Necrom review. Thanks for watching!